In this video, I'm unboxing the Sennheiser MKE 600. Now this is a shotgun microphone that can attach directly to your digital camera through an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cord. It also comes with a little shock mount that can attach to your camera's cold shoe mount. So here's the back of the box and it has a few of the features in multiple languages. We also have some information about the MKE series and some optional accessories that are not included in the box. And here are some technical data information or specs. And inside the box we should find the microphone, the shock mount, the cable, a foam windshield, and a pouch. So it looks like it says to open here, so I'll go ahead and do that. And there we go, it looks like we first have a quick guide and some safety instructions and manufacturer declarations. And this looks to be the included pouch. The feel is pretty nice. It feels like it's padded foam on the inside here. We have a zipper. Does not look to be a YKK zipper. So not the highest quality zipper, but probably should be okay. And then that is the fabric material. It's a little bit plush, like kind of foam and has some air. So it does have a little bit of padding. So that's nice. We'll come back to that later. Under here, there we go. So we have the microphone itself, the cable, the shock mount, and the foam windscreen. So let's go ahead and look at this cable first, I guess. So this is an XLR with the little quick release. And it does have a coil for some extra length if you need it. Although as you can see here, it's not too much. So I think it's around a foot or so, maybe 10 to 15 inches. And then here is the side that will plug into your camera. So I definitely will be trying to use this directly plugged into my camera. For that you will need a AA battery in order, to, in order to provide power to the microphone. So I'll show that later. Here is the shock mount. So we have the Sennheiser logo here. It has a tiny little bit of heft to it. There's, I guess, the number, official number of this shock mount specifically. Might be a little cable clip or something here. I'm not sure yet. And there's the bottom portion. So it is flexible. This should fit in a camera's cold shoe or hot shoe area. And then this little part here, as you can see, there's a little uh, space here so you can turn this to tighten it on so it shouldn't fall out of the hot shoe. But there is a tripod mount. I'm assuming this is, I'm not sure if it's quarter, quarter or three eighths, but I will verify that later so that you can actually attach this off camera and still plug it into your camera or plug it into a audio interface with phantom power. So it's a very versatile microphone, one of the reasons I picked it up. So I will definitely be showing more of that later. Here is the windscreen. So we have the Sennheiser logo again. This is where you insert the microphone. Sennheiser again on the other side. And definitely very foamy, very lightweight. And that's the windscreen. So here is the microphone. So 
It has some weight to it, but it's not super heavy, so that's nice. We have the Sennheiser MKE 600 here written on the microphone itself. On the sides, we have what helps reject the off-axis ambient noise. So there's one on one side and some on the other side. This is the input for the microphone. And then on this side, we have the XLR input. And I don't think there's anything else in the box. So I'm going to get this out of the way. So I'll just kind of show you this here. Looks like we also have some options here. We have an on off switch and another switch which I believe if you put, if you switch this down, so it's connected or pointed to this side, you have the low cut or high pass filter, which would help reduce wind noise or other low frequency rumblings. I'm personally hoping it will reduce some fan noise, but if you're outside and it's a windy day, you may want to put that on and see if it helps. And I believe, you just unscrew here, but I'm going to check the quick start guide. And first I'll go ahead and show you everything in here that came in the box just to make sure we have it all. <laughs> so we have the pouch, the microphone, the shock mount, the foam windscreen. We have the XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable. We have a safety instructions and a quick guide. So that is everything that came inside of the box. I'm gonna go here and look at the quick guide real quick. So I was talking about phantom powering and it's showing how you can connect the XLR into the microphone and then connect the 3.5 into your camera. Okay, I guess. Yeah, so there's the whole page at once. Let's see, there are some things on the back also. So I will go ahead and put that to the side for a second. I'm actually kind of curious how it fits in this pouch. So if I put this in the pouch, yeah, there we go. You probably want to put it with the foam screen on, but maybe you wouldn't need to. Actually, let's go ahead and put the foam screen on. So I believe, yeah, you kind of just twist like that. And it does just cover right up to the little low cut filter switch there. So now if I put this in the pouch, Maybe I need to put this like this. So it's a little harder to get in with the foam windscreen on. Then you can put in the shock mount and the cable. And let's see if it closes. Actually, that closed pretty well. So that's what the pouch looks like when everything is inside of it. All right, so it is nice they provide that. Let's see if I can take it out easily. <laughs> so maybe it would be easier to do without the foam screen on, I'm not sure. All right. So I'll put that out of frame just for a moment. So we've already gone over what's inside of the box. I've talked about the low cut switch. Okay, so there's an LED operation indicator, battery on off and battery switch. And then four is the XLR3 socket. So here this is showing that you just have to um, rotate the microphone bottom portion and insert a double A battery and then close it. Then you'll want to turn the 
on switch, on off switch to on if you're using the battery. There we go. So looks like if it's solid, then it's relatively full. If it's flashing for one second, then you have less than eight hours left. And if it's flashing quicker than one second, there are, it's basically 0%. So you probably want to change your battery. If you're using battery, not phantom power, change your battery as soon as you see the light blinking. And again, the LED is right here above the on and below the low cut filter. And I'll just go ahead and show you that you can, there I'm rotating that toward me, just the bottom part. And here's where you enter or insert the AA battery. After you insert it, making sure you line up the plus and minus sides correctly, then you just uh, screw that back on. So again, that would only be if you're connecting it to your camera. If you're connecting it to an audio interface with phantom, phantom power, you don't need to insert the battery. It can run off of phantom power. Uh, set up, so it's showing putting it in the shock mount. Looks like they put the shock mount right after the uh, side rejection. It looks like this would be in the back, so something like this. I don't know if I need to slide it in. It looks like I just pushed down, so there we go. It's a little bit of a tight push, but I never really felt like I was breaking it, but I just felt like I did have to push hard down. So there's the shock mount uh, attached. And then, so then they mention, or they <laughs> indicate putting it into your camera's hot shoe and uh, rotating that locking mechanism like I mentioned before, and then putting it into there. So just to show you this, I have a ZVE-10 here. This is my hot shoe mount. So I will take the microphone and assuming I want the mic to be picking up the sound in front of the camera, I just insert the shock mount there. And then I need to rotate this so that it is tight. Otherwise it might be able to move back and forth. And you can see there how the shock mount here is kind of going back and forth. So that's what it looks like on the camera. And then I can, for the ZVE-10, the microphone input is here. And even though it says plug in power, I do not believe it is phantom P48 power. So I will need to use a AA battery, but first I'll show you how to insert this. So you'll want to see how there's three here you'll want to line up the three like so, and then it will just click into place. Maybe I should've done that before putting it on. <laughs> okay, I think that's in. I didn't hear any clicks. Ah. Well, let me do that again real quick, just to verify. I think it's in there correctly. Okay. There, so you should hear a click. So I would highly recommend putting this in before you put it on your camera. I guess maybe they do mention that in the <laughs> quick start guide. So I'll do that and then I'll put it back on my hot shoe. And if it won't fit, you may have to loosen the rotating thing here. But 
And you just want to make sure that it's there. Okay. So now I'm going to take this end and it should fit into this. And it does. So now all I need is the uh, battery, which I probably should have put in to begin with. So let me go get a battery. All right, so I'm gonna try this in a loop rechargeable double A. And it looks like I'm going to need to either take it out of the shock mount, which I probably will do. Let's see how easy that is. All right, so that is in there pretty good. So you do have to exert some significant amount of force. Huh. Well, let's just do this all over again. <laughs> there we go. So for some reason, ah, so you can't put in the battery if you have the XLR cable attached. So pro tip, learn from my experience, because the XLR plug gets recessed. Should have realized that, but anyway, now you know. So I'll go ahead and put this in, see how I'm matching the plus and the minus. Okay. So now I'm gonna tighten this. All right, now I'm going to put this back in. I press down firmly. There we go. And then I'm going to reattach this. Oh, and I just told you to put the cable in before, but let's see if I can do it without. Let's see if I hear the click this time. Okay. So you can put in the XLR cable while it's in the shock mount. You just do need to verify you hear that click. So here it is. I have it looking like this step in the setup. So here is telling you if you have it in this position where the little button is facing or closest to the straight line, the low cut filter is off. And if we move it to close to the little ramp up icon, then the Frequencies below 100 hertz are attenuated to reduce wind and impact noise. And then you either have this little foam windscreen if you want to use it. It also helps with the plosives, which are the pa 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 sounds. So that could be recommended to use. So let's go ahead and insert that. So that fits well there. And yeah, here I'll show you these, these specifications real quick in case this helps you. These are the specifications. It is a super cardioid pickup pattern. It has different sensitivities depending on whether you're using P48 phantom power or battery power. Slightly more one dB noise level if you're using the battery, but I think it'll be fine. Operating time with battery is approximately 150 hours. And the weight is approximately 128 grams without the battery. I could confirm that, but I've already got it all set up, so. And it does talk about cleaning. Looks like just with a dry cloth, don't use a wet cloth of any kind. And here is the polar pattern and frequency response. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like if I turn on my camera. So, oops. So here are the audio. Let me zoom in for you. So these are the audio channels. So I need to check the levels. 
with volume settings. So on Sony, let me get to my audio levels. Here, audio recording level. So this is already really high. So let me do a quick check here for myself. Oh, you know what? Well, that's good because it's turned off. <laughs> so now we turn it on and there you should see, let me turn it off again. See the LED, LED was on for just a brief moment. Make sure you catch that on for just a brief moment. So I guess when it's not, uh, it's just when you first turn it on that it will show up there. So now let's see, there we go. So now you can see that my levels are going crazy. I'm going to turn them down. And I think usually the rule of thumb, depending on what you're trying to get is 18 to negative 12. So maybe, obviously I'm not talking directly into the camera right now, but you know, you'd want to do something like maybe 20 or less on this example. And I'll do some other tests because it's a little hard with this setup to uh, talk to the camera unless I change my angle. So I'll do another video where I actually test this sound quality, but that is how you get this set up. You have the, uh, the low cut filter. You can turn it on or off if you're using the battery. And then if you're plugged directly into your camera, you can change your audio recording levels or you'll change it on your audio interface. All right, so thanks for watching my unboxing and setup of the Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun microphone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up down below or telling me so in the comments and consider subscribing if you wanna see more content on video, audio, and lighting. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.